Joining me now from Los Angeles is child psychiatrist Dr. Victoria Dunkley. She's also the author of Reset Your Child's Brain, a four-week plan to end meltdowns, raise grades and boost social skills by reversing the effects of electronic screen time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rosemary. So US Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy, we heard him there, he's demanding Congress pass legislation to put warning labels on social media apps, similar to those we see on cigarettes and alcohol. He says social media can be extremely damaging to the health of young people, particularly, but uh, also adults. So what's your reaction to his suggestions and how likely is it that warning labels like this will make any difference? I, I'm, I was actually really excited to hear him say that. I think it will actually, I think it actually can make a big difference. We know that warning labels do help, um, especially like with the tobacco warnings, we, we did see tobacco use drop significantly and continue to decline after that. So I think parents really are ready to hear this message, but they feel helpless to do anything. Um, but I do see like the younger generation of, of, for kids who are in, or parents of kids of elementary school age, they are hearing all this research. And I think it's gonna be those parents that are um, more, have the conviction and the resolve to really prevent their kids from using social media. I already hear parents talking about having packs um, to band together as their kids get older to stay away from social media. It's the par But the parents who are in kind of the thick of it now with parents of teens, really feel helpless. So I, I think having that warning will help them. And Dr. Murthy says uh, social media can have detrimental effects on mental health and increase the risk of depression for adolescents. So how strong is the evidence that this, this is indeed the case? It's, it's overwhelming, I would say. Um, I think we know in general that screen time is psychoactive. It's depress depressogenic in general, screen time. The social media adds extra layers on there. So we already know that screen time um, disrupts sleep, it changes brain chemistry, it increases stress hormones, it kind of shifts blood flow so that um, kids can't access the more developed parts of the brain. It affects impulse control and attention and mood regulation. Um, and then social media adds extra layers on top of that. So, ex so it not only exploits these reward pathways, but because it's social, it meets, it's meeting all these developmental needs that are very strong during, especially um, adolescents and in particular early adolescents. So the need to um, role play, to be seen, um, to belong, all of those things are being exploited uh, by very sophisticated techniques. So we actually see like um, for, for younger adolescents that their brain lights up even more strongly than an older adolescent's brain would, when they're getting social media cues. So we know their brains are uh, extremely vulnerable and they're not as able to, they don't have the impulse control or the executive control to, to stop using it. So it's really, it, we're really setting them up to be depressed. So all of these brain changes are happening, even if they're using it in an appropriate way. Um, and we also see that kids who are prone to being depressed or anxious or have poor social skills, those kids are the most vulnerable and they're having even you know stronger effects. So all these effects are playing out clinically. We're, we're seeing acuity levels that I have never seen before in 20 years. It is, right. it, it's, it's not sustainable. I mean, kids are cutting, you know, they're self-harming, they're overdosing. Um, they, a lot of them have eating disorder issues and we are seeing it, it's more so in girls, but we're seeing this in boys and young men also. So it's, it's just not sustainable and it's, it's hard on the clinicians as well because right. the acuity is so high and it, it just takes a tremendous amount of resources. So given that evidence, how likely is it then that Congress will go ahead and pass legislation to put warning labels on social media apps? What, what pressure is being applied here? I, I think, I think th I'm hoping that will actually happen. But my concern is that if we, if, if we rely on um, the social media companies themselves to police themselves, to change algorithms, to not be delivering at this dangerous content, um, to, for them to be monitoring for bullying and pornography and all those things, it's just not gonna happen. So I think um, what really needs to happen is to, have, is to have these medical warnings so that parents are um, equipped to, to see what's really going on and also to say no and for it to be okay for kids to say no and to live, you know, we, we need to set them up so that they can live in a healthy way um, and not be setting them up to be depressed and anxious.
Dr. Victoria Dunkley, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Rosemary. I appreciate it.